Well, folks, it's about that time again. Time to do filter. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to all my fellow truckers and truckettes out there. Thanks for joining me on my Highway Cowboy channel. We're going to do take two on a video that I posted before is changing out the fuel filters on a Packard MX-13, seeing as the last time's footage was less than ideal. The camera angles weren't that great. So it's time to do it over again. Let's walk through it one more time. But before we do that, I want to spread some light on a good company out here that's truly representing the uh, trucking industry and all our truckers, uh, trucking sisters and uh, brothers out here on the highway. That's Big Rick T's Trucking Apparel. Check them out, guys. They got some really good, uh, high quality apparel out here. Not to mention some of the best artwork on a t-shirt you've ever seen. Give them a shot, guys. Go on BigRickTees.com. Find your local dealer where you can get yourself some of the best uh, trucking apparel out here. And uh, join them live on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok every day, Monday through Friday, where you can win your chance of getting a uh, free t-shirt on uh, with Big Rick Tees. Give them a, give them a shout out, guys. Let them know the Highway Cowboy uh, sent you. All right, guys. Let's get to it, huh? Now, I don't know much about other trucks out there, but I know if you got a Peterbilt 389 and you got one of these fuel filter gauges, remember, that red light is going to come around around 12 inches of mercury. That's... You should... Let's put it this way. You should never be able to see that light. That will be too late, and uh, you really should have fresh filters way before that. Now, one thing I've been taught over the years is that once it crosses over seven inches of mercury, that's when it becomes uh, a fuel starvation issue slightly. And you will notice that the engine does run a little bit different. It still runs good, but it's going to sound different. Now, so what I tend to do once it crosses that seven mark when you're diving down a road, that's the time when I change my filters out. The things we're going to need to get this job done real quick is obviously your filters. If you got a 2016 Packard MX-13 truck, just like I do, your main fuel filter will be part number right here, 2277129 Papa Echo as of late. Don't be fooled because it does say fuel water separator. It is not a fuel water separator. For some reason, they use it as a fuel filter. Now, when you get your fuel water separator, what I use is Fleet Guard. These filters are readily available wherever you go, so this is pretty much what I use. It's Foxtrot Sierra FS19765 out of Fleet Guard. All right, as far as tools go, you're probably gonna need a breaker bar to get that main fuel filter uh, cap off because it does have pressure behind it, so it might be a little bit difficult to get it loose. Well, after the fact, you can probably tighten it down with a smaller wrench. As far as the socket goes, it's going to be one and a quarter inch size to get that cap off. You're going to need some shop racks because, of course, just like anything in trucking, it will get dirty. But the fuel water separator, you're going to need one of these guys, the Davco uh, filter wrench. You can get these online. You can get them in parts stores. They're all over the place. I'll leave a link description in link in the description below where you guys can find them. Now, obviously, you're going to need a little bit of clean diesel straight out of the pump so you can guys can replace that fuel that was in the fuel water separator now and of course to drain the old stuff out you're going to need some empty uh empty container get it out so you don't make a giant mess everywhere but yeah this is pretty much it it's not much to it let's get to it start off we're gonna take this cap off you can get it off by hand nothing too difficult crank it loose put it somewhere safe don't lose it grab your container like so and then start draining the old stuff out remember don't go all the way to the bottom because you don't want to put air into the system where it's going to be even harder for you to crank so just drop it right below the line as much as you can it is going to be a little bit messy but we do the best we can so keep draining keep draining as you can see the level is dropping all right a little bit messy that's all we got the shop racks all right that's about it close this up i saw a little bit crud to come out of there you can see that on camera it's uh some stuff came out of there <laughs> all right so once we got that done we grab our dafco wrench and crack this bugger loose now remember that cap right there and this right here will have will have o-rings on it which would come with the filter and we're going to replace that as well and i'll show you how that's done okay 
put that right there remember guys these stuff this stuff are plastic you don't want to go wrenching on these things too hard uh, because they will break all right here we go put that aside like so and then grab this guy out trying not to make a huge mess here and conveniently we've got a garbage can right there dump that away all right now a good useful habit is to go inside look inside there make sure you don't have any giant bits of crud anything in there that could get stuck that'll only make your life more difficult if you guys stick to the end i'll tell you a story about that real quick you'll see what i'm talking about why that's important to look in there stick around i'll tell you now grab our new filter Okay, crack this guy open, like so, don't lose the o-rings, and place this guy down there, oh. now you're going to notice that's going to start taking in some of the diesel, so you remember you got to use your fresh diesel to fill that right back up real quick. Now, while that's doing that, let's change out our O-rings. Right here, you always wanna do this. Don't ever leave the old ones on. Okay. Grab this other one right here. And change this one out on the cap. All right, just like so. Take this one out. Drop the new one in. Nope. Fresh ones like to uh, pop right back up, so <laughs> make sure you get that on there. That's gonna fight me today, I see. All right. Hopefully that stays put. Great. We're gonna put this back together, actually. Like so. Now remember it's got the spring there so it's going to fight you a little bit trying to put it back on but make sure you catch them threads properly don't cross thread anything and that should be good right there get it finger tight get your wrench out and snug it up don't overdo it guys remember it's plastic so just as long as nothing is leaking that's the important part Okay. Now we grab the cap, the top cap. Well, not yet, actually. We need to fill that up with diesel. All right. Fill it all the way to the top. Give that, uh, that fuel water separator filter something to take in so you don't have air pockets running into the system because that will lead to fuel starvation in the common rail on a Packard MX-13. And that's a no bueno. Okay. And you see it's going to start taking it in. You see the bubbles coming up. What I like to do is give it a good few taps, get the bubbles out a little faster. And then get your cap back on there. All right. Get your shop rags, clean it up a little bit. All right. And this also makes it easier to check if you have any fuel leaks later after the fact, so you know where it's coming from when you wipe it down. All right, that one's done. Time to move on to step two. All right, moving forward, what you're gonna wanna do is take your shop rag or one of them, put them down here. So you're gonna have some leakage going on. So as soon as you crack this cap off, so good idea to put some uh, some rags in there real quick. 
then get your diesel all over your engine. And once we got that, grab your breaker bar and grab your one and a quarter inch socket. Put that together like so and loosen this guy up real quick. Right. And remember, like I said, it has some pressure in there, so it's gonna fight you. It won't be as hard putting it back on. And this one, remember, also has an O-ring on the cap, which it will be replacing. It also comes with the filter. now stay there and here comes the waterworks oh there we go <laughs> guy off to the side like so stay there okay yank your filter out and off to the garbage can we go again bam all right again look inside make sure you don't have anything that shouldn't be in there all good Let's grab the new filter. Okay, we've got our fresh O-ring. Pop this guy loose. Okay. Oh. Like so. Okay. Put the garbage in my pocket and now we we'll replace this o-ring right here okay put that off to the side make sure you put it in this groove right here don't put it anywhere else because you won't have a good seal make sure you guys do that Come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> My hands are slippery from the diesel, so it's not exactly making things easier. And there we go, cool. You know, the idea is to reduce or minimize the amount of air going into the system so as to not to cause any issues when it comes back to starting it up. Yep, you see it's taking that in pretty good, that filter. While we're here, I'm going to top this guy off. Because it did, as you notice, it did take in quite a bit. I guess the rest we'll put in over here whatever it'll take it'll take okay now we can go ahead and put our cap back on yeah you don't want to air Ooh. <laughs> a little bit messy my bad okay so the idea obviously is to minimize the amount of air getting into the system oops what was i getting at i already forgot <laughs> all right let's get our wrench okay oh, 
Right, so what I was saying is the idea is to minimize the amount of air going into the system because if you know anything about pack cars, MX-13, they are extremely finicky when doing fuel filter changes. You get it wrong, it won't start up so easy. So once we get this cap back on, start pumping away. It could take quite a bit quite a few pumps the idea is to keep pumping until it gets stiff enough and you won't be able to pump any more or it's gonna be very difficult to do so there should be plenty good amount of pumps it's getting pretty tight tighten this guy back down get your rag out of the way make sure to get another one fresh one wipe everything down again so as to locate any leaks that would potentially happen and plus you don't want any uh extra nonsense or extra crud on your engine so do your due diligence clean it up as best as you can all right since we're already over here you might as well check your oil since it's right there Make sure that's up to par and get a clean spot on the rag. You might as well check it, right? Right on the money, look at that, I love it. Cool, cooling is fine, everything's fine. All right, next step up, once you're done pumping, time to go crank up the engine real quick. Get it fired up, give it a few minutes to idle. And uh, try not to mash on the gas, anything so, Again, don't let any more air that might be in there. Don't force it into the engine. Give it some time to sit there and idle just a bit. All right, let's fire it up. Let us do its system cycle real quick. Don't ever prematurely start your truck. Most trucks don't take kindly to that. It will throw codes if you start it before it finishes its cycle. All right, here we go. y'all so let's do a quick story time with the highway cowboy here i'll tell you why is it important to look into all your crevices in the engine where you put your filters at once upon a time ago in my truck believe it or not i had an issue that one time i told you about um that i got that red light on the uh, fuel filter gauge and that was actually false reading and i'll tell you why is because for some reason i don't know to this day I found paper towels, like legitimately the brown paper towels you find in the public restroom stuck in the fuel line. There's a little ball valve at the end of that fuel water separator directly in the line that comes from your fuel tanks. And in that ball valve, it was all completely caked up in the paper towels. <laughs> and I don't know if that was a bad sabotage attempt or whatever it was. I don't know to this day what that was, but... Make sure you make it a habit to always lick into that ball valve, look into that fuel filter housing, the fuel water separator housing, because you never know. Thankfully, it was there, and it was not not anywhere further down the line towards the engine um, or things of that nature. So always make sure you guys look into that, because you never know who, <laughs> who's trying to mess with you or who's trying to give you a bad day, guys. Not saying that could be the case, but sometimes you get black algae in the fuel tank. Sometimes you get all sorts of things in the fuel. It's not as clean as you think it is, despite the fact that it's quality control. A lot of the quality control is done by the actual gas station themselves. And if they say it's good, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, guys, on that note, thanks again for watching the uh, Highway Cowboy channel. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this one uh, is a little bit more educational than the last one better some uh, some better camera angles in thanks again for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one